Um, I introduced the first lady was Miriam Gibbs. I don't like the I should have brought my earplugs. <laughs> well, I really shouldn't be here. My husband should be here because he loved this council room and loved Whitehall. Attended everything during the centennial, uh, 50, 100 years. He grew his beard and he was wonderful. He, he, he also was on the council here. His short-term memory was gone, but his long term memory he could recite way back to the drugstores and everything else. But I'll do the best I can. Uh, my name is Miriam Markwood Gibbs, and I say Markwood because I figure we're pioneer people here. Markwoods came from Posen, Germany, and maybe they'll see the place over there. Um, they came here <clears throat> uh, and landed in Michigan City. I'll make it quick and short. And then they came to Montague, and when they parked on a boat, they were on a boat outside of Old Channel Inn, where the Old Channel Inn is. My grandmother was lowered by that to the skiff and fell in the water. And it went through. <laughs> they walked to Montague, they did small farming, and then eventually they, uh, my grandfather was Gustav Marquardt. They had four children, three boys and a girl. And Gustav was my grandfather, and Pauline was the girl. Um, Gustav buried Albertina, Wilhelmina, Runzel, and settled in Claybanks. <laughs> it was a German community out there at that time. That's not Whitehall. But then, um, just a minute. I'm through with the Marquis. <laughs> Let's go to the game. Oh, I was born on January 7th, 1917, which makes me 93, going on 94. I married Elliot Gibbs from Whitehall. <laughs> Another, uh, my folks came over in 1800, his came in 1600, and they were here a long time. In fact, the King of England gave them a sheepskin and drew the plot of a place in New York State for them to go to. They went to Ireland and then over here. And then eventually they came to Michigan, and there's a book written in my home in western Michigan that. It, Talk, talks about the plank road that came up. They came up that way, not by boat. And it settled um, up at, it was called Peach Ridge. And it's right close to that old house that's standing on the left of Cherry Point. If you drive up to Cherry Point for cherries or anything, it's that old house that's covered with the Gibbs uh, place. They had three boys and two girls, and Frank was one of them. And he moved to Whitehall with his family. and built the house on Alice Street, on the corner of Alice and Division, and they raised the children there. Uh, several of them, Elliot and Donna, stayed in town. The other three went to Texas and Flint and Ipsy, places like that. Um, the Marquettes, oh, the Gibbs, let's go back to the Gibbses. Because their, <laughs> their Gibbses are the Whitehall folks. Um, Frank worked for Slocum, Elliot Slocum. He did a lot of corresponding between him. He has many letters that I've seen, uh, well written, and he would deal with Slocum and someone in Whitehall that wanted to buy property. He uh, also worked for Slocum because Slocum built these houses in Bunker Hill and Swedentown and he would uh, take care of them. He used to have an old paper, hang, paper cart with big wheels that the children used to play with. But he would haul that, he would paper and paint and fix up these houses. These were for the people from Sweden, who lived in Swedentown, down the south end of Swedentown. And that's important too, because that's where I moved. Um, I should quit talking because then I lose my train of thought. It's not fun to get old. Um, I moved to Whitehall when I was in the second grade. We had found a house on um, Turns, Old Turns Place. We lived there, then we moved to Swedentown, and we lived in three houses down there. We lived across from Hardy Esterdahl, and next to Dahlstrom's and across from Harvard Lane Green, and we did our shopping at Little at Charlie's Cap Peterson's and Little Charlie's Grocery Store, if you remember. And we children, there was three of us, we walked to school in the morning, we walked to school home for lunch, and we walked back for the afternoon. 
Today we'd be bust, but we walked <laughs> back and forth. And I think that's about the favorite places that I remember growing up. Um, On the fight garage. Yeah. Well, my dad, the reason we, worked to, we moved to Whitehall was because my father had left the farm and he got a job in the Pike Garage. And the Pike Garage, he was a mechanic along with Cully Myers from Montague and Dad worked there. They had a lot of exciting things happen there. It's, it was where the old, it's where the auto store is now. Used to be the Pike Garage. And uh, I remember he brought home one of the first screwdrivers with a hard plastic handle that you couldn't break. And he was showing everybody, you know, they'd come around with things like that. And Mother and Dad drove cars. They would get maybe four of them in a car and drive down to Detroit. They'd pick up the car that they were supposed to drive home and they would get a box lunch and they never stayed overnight. They'd go down and pick up the car and their box lunch and came back. Um, a lot of things happened there, but Dad worked there until the Pike moved uptown on Colby and it became the Ford Garage. Um, The other thing, the reason I came here was to talk about the Pike Garage. Now I'll get to it. And I, I'm how are you doing? Am I short? Okay, well. Two minutes left. <laughs> I lost my paper, so I'll just. In 1911, the West Michigan Lakeshore <coughs> Highway decided they needed a road from Chicago to Mackinac. And they didn't know what to do with it, but they decided to call it the West Michigan Pike. They had big signs with half of just the shoreline and they had all the cities, all the cities lined up where you could see Saugatuck and all the rest of them. And they started and they drove this all, it was also, it was also called Michigan Route 66. But this was called the Pike and that's why the Pike Garage got its name. Someone asked me, they thought maybe it was because they had Pike fish. <laughs> well, you try to figure these things out. But this um, was written up in uh, the museum last year. They had quite an exposition. This man, Stephen J. No, Vincent J. Musi, M-U-S-I, is a photographer well known. He has some of his pictures in the National Geographic. And he uh, took this trip of 100 miles. And he went from Saugatuck to Muskegon and all of them. And he photographed it along the way. Um, I think that's about all I've got to say. Am I, am I all right? Did it go too long? Okay, it's fine. Okay.